welcome back. This is the third video in our series, and we've just gone over configuring our SharePoint Framework React JS web part by using a config file. And so we've just discussed that config file, and now we're going to sort of say, okay, we've got our config file, and how do we actually get started using it? So Patrick, do you want to show where we're going to initialize and import this config file? I do, Julie. Thanks for having me back. We are going to look now at how we've actually used this get SP function that we talked about last time as a way to centralize our configuration of PNPJS to a single file. So we've got, of course, in our web part, this is a React based web part, but uh, this would apply to lots of different uh, frameworks and such. So it's not just React specific. But we have kind of the web part class. This is the, S the SharePoint framework class that represents our web part. And you're used to with V2 to doing some work in the on init to set up the SP because that's uh, one of the first things called in the web part for lifecycle. And it's also one of the first times you have access to the context object of the web part. So what we want to do is make sure we get things set up. So lots of ways to do this, but what we're going to kind of do is use get SP. Uh, here in the on init of the web part, passing it the this dot context, which is going to be the uh, SharePoint framework context, or it's actually the class name is like web part context or something like that. Uh, we're going to pass that to the SP. Looking again at how the SP works, if SP is not defined uh, or rather is null and context is not equal to null, uh, we're going to go ahead and set up the SP. We showed that, talked about that last time using the context, the SPFX behavior. And we were going to return that SP that we've set up, or we're going to return one that was previously set up. Because each web part represents a closure, this SP uh, underscore SP is going to be essentially a global inside uh, that web part. So we're going to be able to access it uh, from all of our components. So you can see we're not getting the return here. Like here we could say const SP equals get SP. We get that back for sure. But we don't need to do that here. We're just sort of registering things, initializing things with that context where we're going to use them later. I'm going to jump over real quick. We're going to talk about the components in more depth in our next video, but just want to show you real quick how we use that within what is now a React component. So we're inside our React component, PNPJS example component. Ignoring for now the overall functionality of this component, which Julie's going to cover in our next video, I just want to show you here now within that component, we can call get SP with no parameters, and we're going to get back that SP we have stored previously in the config, that being the SP up here. And so we're able to use that SP, and we set this.sp uh, as a local reference inside this example component. But it's just a pointer back essentially to uh, our SP instance that lives off in that config, that centralized module here. So it's a nice way to, to reuse that as much as we need. And then below in our web part, again, ignoring for now exactly what's going on in the code, we're able to use the this.sp in a number of places. Uh, one of them is collapsed for future reference, uh, but we're able to do the this.sp there. And again, we're only just pointing back to that centrally configured SP instance. So that's a nice way, again, to put all your imports here, have a single kind of function to initialize and get that SP set up. And then, of course, you know, this SP could take lots of other parameters, different URLs, you know, different behaviors to apply. There's lots of ways to do this. But this is just a nice, simple, clean example of sharing an SP thing um, across all our components. And it sort of emulates uh, what used to work or how it used to work in v2 where the sp object itself was a global so we're sort of recreating that while allowing us to to configure it and set things up exactly how we want for our projects and so in our next right. video julie's going to talk through what this project actually does yeah we're definitely going to do that and the other thing i wanted to add about the the uh, multiple components is if you decide that you need new functionality and you add a new component you can put all your extra imports that you need back in that config file and everything will then be available versus having to define all your imports in each place where you're using your sp object so that's a super uh fun and um better way to handle it so that you have everything centralized in one location so yeah, we're going to definitely go through the details of this component in our next video. So stay tuned for that. Fantastic. I can't wait. Talk to you soon, Julie.